Welcome back, Stas23 here, back again with some knife therapy, and before I get started, if you like this video, please drop a thumbs up on it, it helps out the channel a whole bunch, if not, thumbs down also works, and if you like knife content and you're not already, smash the subscribe button with the bell notification so you don't miss any of the content. Alright, I have an interesting one for y'all today, coming from Jonathan McNeese Custom Knives, this is his PM Mac 2. PM stands for Performance Machined, kind of like a mid-tech, if you would want to call it that. Uh, the prices range from $467 to $517 from what I, what I saw online. My particular version uh, cost me $487 at Blade Show this year. These are 100% made in the USA. And... Uh, <laughs> My particular one has a green anno, a blasted finish green anno, and then this um, this laser engraving, which, you know, the anno and the laser engraving cost more money. Um, let's get some specs out of the way so you can see how big or actually how small this knife actually is. You have a total length of 6.625 inches. You have a blade length of right at 3 inches, so it's going to be legal in a lot of areas. You have a grip area from front right here to the back of around three and a half inches. You have a closed thickness from here to here in the scales of 0.48 inches, so uh, a little under average of the half inch average. Uh, your width in the pocket, closed width from here to here is 1.19 inches, so pretty slender in this dimension as well. And you have a blade stock thickness of 0.1 to 5, pretty chunky uh, blade stock. And the behind the edge thickness on my particular knife is around 20 thousandths uh, from here to here, uh, sharpened at 20 degrees per side. All right, before we get any further, let's break off into some cutting footage and see how well this Mac 2 does. All right, we're gonna test the factory sharpness. Nice and sharp. All right, it sliced fine. And it was rather comfortable. Still nice and sharp. All right, we're gonna test the ergos on this uh, pine two by four by doing a little wood shaving, and we're gonna test how well that uh, edge is still biting. Alrighty, uh, it did well. Uh, it, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend doing that with this small of a handle on a knife, but for its size and having flat scales, it was comfortable because this is all softened around the edges. It bit into the wood nicely and still really sharp. Okay, we're gonna cut up several different types of materials. See how well it does. We got two different size uh, dense tubing, one with mesh one inch and half inch I think this is we got some 3 8 inch bungee uh, rolled up denim all these things could be abrasive rubber gasket material and some thick saddle leather Get started on the leather first Alrighty, it sliced fairly well uh, in some of the 
task is kind of hard to hold on because it was a smaller handle. Okay, I got something on the blade. Still fairly sharp. All right, we're gonna to try to cut up some of this uh, half-inch twisted sisal uh, rope. All righty, um, I cut up twenty cuts with it in this front portion it was it was okay pushing down in there a little uncomfortable see in that front section so pretty sharp all right we're gonna Try some edge impact testing on this uh, round aluminum bar stock. We're going to try to stay in, in that area and kind of toward the front area of this knife. We hit it three times. Nice. There's the impact right there. Nothing. Might have a small snag. Nope, I'd say it's good. Alrighty, I hope y'all enjoyed that one. I will tell you, this knife has been surprising me more and more. The more I use it, more I carry it. Um, let's take a closer look at this blade. You have a nice classic drop point with a nice, uh, nice like polished type stone wash on there. You have a nice top swedge. It kind of it, in my opinion, it's a clip point, but I saw it say drop point on another side, but it actually has like the clip that comes right there. So we'll call it a clip point. Um, on this side, you have the Magnese, uh, mark right there with the PM underneath it, with the stars. And on this side, you have the American flag USA and the blade steel designation, which is CPM 20 CV, which is... Pretty much the same as M390 or uh, 204P, CTS 204P. You do have a row of jimping right here that, that is pretty grippy and is not overly uh, aggressive. You, you have kind of a sharpening trawl there, but as you can see, it doesn't clear the plunge grind. You do have this smile toward the, the back part of the, the uh, edge termination. Close it up. You do have dual blasted thumb studs on my particular one that I'm guessing I'm guessing they're titanium. I'm not sure, but that doesn't really matter. They're dual thumb studs. Very smooth action. Riding on bear, cage bearings. Nice and snappy action. Shake it pretty easily. Uh, if you want, you can slow roll it. The action on this thing is very, very nice. Uh, the detent on my particular one is dialed in very nicely, and the detent is ceramic. Um, not sure about the bearings. I haven't taken this knife apart, but as long as that detent is ceramic, that's all I really care about because that's what really makes it smooth. <coughs> Close it up. You have T8 hardware, body, body hardware, and pivot, and pocket clip. Excellent job there. As if you look at it, you have somewhat of like an orange peel finish on this countersunk uh, flat pivot right there. Just a nice added touch. And like I said, my particular one is it's like a dark blast on here. Then they did a green anno, so it, it's it's like a very light green. And then you have this deep laser engraved on laser etching on here with the stars. And mine says misbehaving. They have several different ones. He does all kinds of different stuff with like American flags and you can get it just plain Jane if you want. 
or plane blasted. Uh, you have very deep countersunk. Look at that. Deep countersinking uh, on the body screws right here. Very, very good hardware. I noticed I didn't have much wiggle at all. Ginormous lanyard hole right there for all you lanyard people. Uh, the blade is perfectly centered. And you got a one-to-one -one blade to handle ratio. And I don't have to worry about catching that tip. And it brings it almost all the way to the end. Uh, on this side, you see you have a tip-up right-hand carry only pocket clip. It's just a bent uh, titanium pocket clip. And let's check that out in the pocket. Whoop, wrong side. Mm -mm -mm. Got a little bit of ramp up there, and that's something that I noticed was happening a good bit. It gets caught, and then I force it the rest of the way. Um, unless I'm holding it underneath there, it's, it gets caught on this uh, on the lock cutout right there. It's one reason why I love seeing the lock cutout on the inside rather than the outside. But at least he does this nice little stippling on the uh, titanium inside the lock cutout right there. I think that's a nice added touch, being that you have it on the outside. Still think it would have been nicer though to not have that. It would have been a lot cleaner in the lines. <clears throat> and as you can see right here you don't have head you don't have any uh screw heads right here because the these screws are tapped into the titanium frame so they go straight through these two uh, barrel standoffs right here into the frame so you have a complete flow through construction and you also have some nice deep uh pocketing look at that very nice deep pocketing to bring the weight down on the knife. Uh, talking about weight, let's check it out. 95 grams and 3.35 ounces. Definitely good to go for me. Um, let's see. Left-handed. Easy to get to those thumb studs as well, and I can easily get to that lock bar. It's very easy to get to the lock because he has a nice chamfer cut out right there. And it's just, it being you have these thick scales, it's easy to move it over, and it's not a very strong uh, lock bar pressure. I love the, the pressure dialed in perfect, in my opinion. From all the testing I did and stuff, Lock did not move over at all. It's about, I'd say, 40%. Uh, absolutely no play left or right or up or down. Rock solid lock up. Uh, <coughs> being that these are flat scaled, uh, flat scale titanium, he did a good job of chamfering and knocking down any sharp spots. And just the way the, the handle shaped right there where it comes up right here, it it fills, fills out the hand nicely. Now, I mean, this is a smaller knife, so um, in my opinion, it's, it's going to be best for your light-duty EDC task. You're not going to want to have to cut all day with this if that's what your job entails or something like that. You could do it, but uh, it'd be more suited for make a cut, put it up in your pocket, you know, go about your day. <coughs> um, let's get some size comparisons out of the way. Got the small Hogue RSK. As you can see, it's it's a lot, and then it's gonna dwarf the, the large is gonna dwarf it. And we have the Ontario Rat Model One, which is gonna dwarf it as well, and the Rat Model Two. So I mean, look butt to butt. You can see the Rat Model Two is a good bit larger. I don't think I have any. Let's see. I do have the uh, Spartan Blades Talos. Well, that one's also going to be a lot. I don't think I have anything right here that is. Let's try. This is the Civivi. I mean, the Ace Giant Mouse Ace Riv. It's the only one that has smaller. And I have the Civivi Elementum. So, there you go. Uh, <laughs> nitpicks, complaints. Uh, all right, like I already said before, 
that edge termination. I wish they would have just brought this this line out a little bit further so it would have cleared that plunge a little better and you wouldn't have this smile toward the back. And also, um, <laughs> the sharpening job on the tip there, you can see where it, it flares out over here. And on this side, it's not it's not as bad. No, it's about the same. Well, I mean, the the tip is very, very thick. The thickness, whenever it, whenever it starts to go into this belly right here, gets very, very thick. And then almost full thickness toward that tip. You could look at the tip and see... Even with that swedge, it's it's pretty stout. Uh, not the end of the world, and I'm sure I could fix that after the first sharpening job. Just something to note. Now this thing came ridiculously sharp, and after all the cutting I've done, it's still very sharp. Yep, it could probably shave arm hair right now. And uh, <coughs> I I did strop it up right before I did the test, and I noticed it drops up really nicely. So overall, I, you know, even with the things that I don't like, you know, like that, that right there, the price, the price is pretty darn expensive for what you, you know, such a tiny knife. And, um, uh, I'm not the biggest fan of screws being tapped into the frame, but I know that Jonathan McNeese would take care of me if, if these were to strip out or something. I mean, he could retap those pretty easily. Um, I also, I could have done without that lanyard hole, especially it's, it's kind of going into that chamfer right there, as you can see. Just think it, it could have been a lot cleaner looking without that, right? Without the, the lanyard hole and without, with the cutout on the inside, it would have been a lot cleaner, especially on the presentation side. But all in all, I like it. He's coming out. Blade Show, he had a newer, little bit bigger version, and I will definitely be trying to get my hands on one of those because I like this one. I know I will like that one even more. All right, guys and girls. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. And I hope everybody's having an absolute wonderful day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.